y'all, Teresa Mahoney here. I'm the video editor at The Oregonian, and today I want to talk to you about some big news in politics. Oregon Secretary of State Shamia Fagan, who's the state's number two elected official, resigned Tuesday, following news that she was working for people who made large political donations to her campaign, which is at least perceived as a conflict of interest. So here's a breakdown of what happened. She took a $10,000 a month consulting job with an Oregon-based cannabis company called Lamota. The cannabis company's owners also owed millions of unpaid marijuana sales taxes and federal tax liens. Fagan agreed to help an affiliate of the company expand to other states and was promised a $30,000 per state bonus if she helped them get more licenses. First, I'll say it's generally not an ethics violation for a state elected official to take on a side hustle or two. Some Oregon judges teach classes for money at law schools. In fact, Fagan also teaches a law class at Willamette University Law School, and there's no inherent issue with that. But here's where it gets tricky. State ethic laws say public officials can't use their office for financial gain. It requires public disclosure of economic conflicts of interest. And the idea of a conflict of interest and perceived conflict of interest can both be dicey for politicians. But here's why it was perceived as a conflict of interest. The couple that owns the Oregon company has been among Fagan's top political donors. They also played a role in helping Fagan's office shape an audit released last week that called on Oregon marijuana regulators to loosen rules to help the industry. Now, Fagan suggested that it was her background as an employment lawyer, not her connection as Oregon Secretary of State that qualified her to help Lamota. But she did acknowledge that doing work for the company included calling Connecticut's Lieutenant Governor, who she connected with as Oregon Secretary of State during national and Democratic meetings of statewide elected officials. In the end, Fagan said she took the job in part because of her low pay as Secretary of State. She makes $77,000 a year, and she said it wasn't enough to make ends meet. So what's next? Deputy Secretary of State Cheryl Myers will take over until Governor Tina Kotek appoints a new Secretary of State to serve out the remainder of Fagan's term, and that runs until January 2025. That's it for now. You can read more details about this story at OregonLive.com politics. Thanks for watching. This is Teresa Mahoney. Until next time.